Welcome back, gang. It's Deltia from DeltiasGaming.com. Here with a different type of build, Bobo Stamina Necro DPS. With so many different gear options, it's actually quite easy to do really good DPS on the bow and specifically on the Necro. You're going to want to pick up this build and watch this video if you're looking for something different that can hit very far, have a lot of range, but can play up close with flexible options and gear. Let's get started with the bow Necro. So pros and cons of the bow necro and why you should play this build. Number one is the pros and range. Obviously, you can be at range with a bow. That's quite obvious, but you actually can play up close. The primary reason you play at range with the bow is the long shot passive from the bow skill line. It gives you a damage bonus up to 12% against enemies at long range. Well, this sounds great and you want to peel back 28 meters or so, but the downside is in PvE, you just can't do that. In trial specifically, you have to stack so that you can get combat prayer, all the other buffs that the group provides you otherwise you're just going to be on your own in the island and probably dead thankfully there's a really cool gear set that we're going to use perfected point blank snipe this comes from battish ram hollows and we'll talk more about it but what it does is increase the damage done in your snipe your main spamble based on how close you are so you can actually get away playing medium up close or long range with the bow and it has a lot of flexibility you have big damage, both in terms of Blast Bones and your Colossus. So you have a lot of group utility and big damage with this specific build. Also, I made the gear setup really easy. So we're in a combination of uh, two five pieces in dungeons that can be extremely easy to obtain and work very, very well for the newer average beginning player. The cons of the bow build are basically you're a little bit less survivable since you don't have a whole lot of healing options and you're not using a 2H with Brawler or Carve for a nice damage shield or the dual wheel with the Ren skill for a really survivable ultimate. And the rotation can be somewhat complex depending if you're using AoE or single target, but we'll discuss more of that later. Let's jump into the skills, walk you through how this works and why it's so effective. All right, weapon choices. So we're going to go with Bobo. Bo. The reason we're going to go with Bobo Bo is you have arena style weapons that amplify specific skills and increase their damage or do some other effect. So if you use two different bows, you can amplify two different abilities. Specifically on the front bar, we're going to have that lethal arrow, which is our main spam, will be amplified by perfected point blank snipe. So if we're in close because we're in PBE and we have to due to a mechanic, we're still going to hit very, very hard. It's not going to strip all of our damage. Lethal arrow is our main spam, and that's what we're going to talk about first. The necro is a little bit different in that you're not going to use your main spam too frequently because you have another hard hitting ability that you're going to prioritize blast bones that we'll talk about a little bit later. So lethal arrow is 30 five meter range so it has a huge max range and will increase damage due to that long shot passive or you can be up close and increase your damage due to the weapon choice. The thing about this is it's going to hit pretty hard, but it's also going to apply the poison status effect. So it's going to do a little bit extra damage and that minor defile, which is more of a PvP concern than it is PvE. It does have a cast time, so that's something to be aware of. So if you're in the middle of a channel when a heavy attack's coming, a mechanic's coming, you need to either block to cancel it or dodge to cancel it to get out of the way. So we're not going to prioritize lethal arrow too much, you're going to use it kind of as a filler in between your other hard hitting abilities and that's blighted blast bones you're going to summon a little blast bones and it's going to shoot out from you after 2.5 seconds and it's going to do disease damage in aoe you need to consider this your primary damage source and at 2.5 seconds it actually has a travel time so you might actually have it go really really quick if you're up close to the target or it might take three to four seconds if you're farther back why that's relevant is it's going to determine how many more lethal arrows or buffs you can cast in between the blighted blast bones but with lethal arrow being 0.8 seconds channel, you almost cast the blighted blast bones, one lethal arrow, and maybe a damage over time, and then you have to cast blighted blast bones again. You can kind of coach yourself if you're casting two or more lethal arrows you're probably not maintaining your dots because blighted blast bones will outperform lethal arrow due to how hard it hits single target in aoe not to mention it will spawn a corpse which you can use for resource sustain or other damage effects 
Speaking of that, let's talk about the Skeletal Archer. This is a hard hitting damage over time for 16 seconds where you summon a Skeletal Archer. The strength of this ability is it ramps up in damage over time, so you don't want to recast it frequently. But something like VMA or Vatish Ram when you're playing solo or a boss fight that has to be summoned through portals, you can cast this without a target. So you can pre-buff it before you jump into a fight to have a little bit more of damage when you start the fight. This will also create a corpse on death or when you recast it, which can be very, very useful. There's a couple passives that tie into this, and this should be considered your number one priority of maintaining. The number one passive here, while a Grave Lord ability active with this member, your spell and physical penetration are increased by 1500. This is very useful in a medium armor build that doesn't have a whole lot of built-in penetration. Another reason to maintain this is for sustain with the un dead confederate passive giving us overall 200 magic stamina and health recovery while this is active and it's going to create corpses so consider this your front primary damage over time dot if you will buff to maintain next up is detonating siphon this has a small radius but does a massive amount of disease damage you have to consume a corpse in order to cast this so it's going to do 12 seconds of damage to enemies around you and between the corpse as well Another reason to have this on our front bar is slotting it. Just simply slotting, it's gonna increase our damage done by 3%. That increased damage by 3% for slotting this is not tied to a buff, major or minor. So it can stack with other major and minor buffs like minor berserk and major berserk, making our bar simple and hit very, very hard. Consider this a flex spot on your front bar if you want something else, but I can't see taking anything over Siphon. We've already talked about lethal arrows, so let's talk about acid spray next. And this is going to shoot out in front of you for about 20 meters so it has a massive distance in front of you it's going to do damage up front and four second damage over time and it's poison damage this is going to be your aoe main spammable in the typical dual wield or 2h route you would do something like carve or you would use something like whirling blades but not with the bow acid spray does really really well the trick with it is it is a kind of in front of you so you have to aim it and kind of peel back so you can hit the maximum amount of targets the damage over time is probably not worth keeping up in a single target application but use this for two or more mobs for big big aoe damage next up is flawless dawnbreaker we're really going to slot this on our front bar for a couple important passives that i think people overlook number one is the slayer passive increasing your weapon damage by three percent for each fighter's guild ability slotted so putting this on our front bar along with that name siphon are both going to really ramp up our damage number two is the banish the wicked you generate three ultimate whenever you kill an enemy this applies to doing massive aoe damage and you'll see just how fast your ultimate will come back with this slotted on your front bar. The ultimate itself is quite useful. It's low cost, gives you a boost of weapon damage for 20 seconds, but you have such a good back bar ultimate. I primarily just slot this because of its usefulness with the skills and passives. Let's go to our back bar now, and this is still going to be a bow, and it's going to be for buffs and healing. And we talked about the arena weapons to amplify damage. We're going to talk a little bit more about that in a second, but we're going to use poison injection in combination with the master's or Dragon Star Arena weapon that increases our weapon damage to the target that's infected by our poison. So this will add 330 weapon damage against something that you inflict with this poison arrow on your back bar. The ability itself is a very hard hitting damage over time that you can use not as a main spam, but really damage over time that ramps up in damage of sub 50% health or less. So acts as kind of a pseudo execute and primarily how we're gonna use it is the number one target that we're going after a boss or a mini boss whoever is the priority target this is what we're going to keep up it is damage over time for 10 seconds so you're going to have to kind of come back here and prioritize casting this on your back bar and single target applications now let's talk about other non-single target applications and working left to right the first ability on the bar is razor caltrops so this is an assault skill and it's going to be aoe damage pretty good physical damage it's going to apply a snare but it's also going to apply major breach lowering physical and spell resistance for four seconds this is nice debuff if you're playing solo or you don't have a reliable way to reduce physical resistances you don't have a tank applying it or you're playing solo because you'll increase your damage significantly this ability is also used in massive aoe 
AOE trash pulls. I do not keep this up single target, however. So on my back bar, usually I combo this with Endless Hail, the skill we're going to talk about next, for massive AOE damage. Then I bar swap and do my Acid Spray to finish them down. Next ability up is just that, Endless Hail. Now, this is a common arena weapon that you can use with Maelstrom Arena to really increase damage as well. So you have a couple different options in arena weapons. I primarily keep this up in AOE fights now going to rain down arrows in a small radius and do a lot of damage over time and it's ground based along with your razor caltrop so if you throw both of these in the kill zone where the tank is you'll do a lot of damage then you switch to your front bar cast the blast bones acid spray big big time aoe damage next ability up is i consider a flex bot on my back bar you have a couple different options what i like to run with is mortal coil this is going to heal you over time it's going to heal people between you and your tether it's going to scale off your highest offensive stat and it's going to restore stamina over 12 seconds along with passively increasing our healing done so it goes really really nice having our a heal echoing vigor on our back bar with mortal coil combo for really good survivability this will require a corpse to activate so this is primarily where your blast bones is going to go to it's going to go to feed your detonating siphon on your front bar and it's going to go to feed your mortal coil on your back bar a common thing I swap in and out here is Necrotic Potence. If I'm playing with a coordinated group with healers running Symphony of Blades and Hollow Fang and all these sets and I don't need so much sustain, I'll go with Necrotic Potence, which will allow me to get a bunch of ultimate on corpses. This is useful because it reduces damage while slotting on our back bar, but also to feed into our ultimate, giving us an absolute nuclear missile when we need it, which we'll talk about in a second. Next, the last ability up on our active skills is Echoing Vigor. This is a heal over time. I prefer this morph in PvE because it heals other people. Believe it or not, you would be shocked at how many times I've saved people's life by just spamming a little echoing bigger. It might be one, two thousand heals per second, but that can really add up, especially if your healer or tank goes down. Take the other Morth Resolving Bigger if you struggle with survivability and need a little bit more bursty heal. Next ability up is the Mother Load, Pestilence Colossus. This is the god tier ultimate and why everyone wants a Necro. It's major vulnerability. So if you cast this, you're going to have every enemy hit with major vulnerability for 12 seconds, increase increasing your damage they take by 10%. Not to mention, this is gonna do damage over time for three seconds, an incredible amount of damage over time in a big, huge AOE radius. It works single target, it works AOE, it works trash packs, it works in every situation. What you wanna do is kinda of save up a Colossus for when you need it most, typically a boss phase with a healer or a tank running aggressive Warhorn. When you pair these two together, your DPS will skyrocket for you and your group. That leads us to the rotation and how to actually play this. So when you're starting this build out, you have to keep in mind your back bar, Razor Caltrops, and Endless Hail. Do I need AoE damage? Yes or no. Typically in trash packs, I will use this. Boss fights, not so much unless there's a lot of ad phases. So our front bar really has a non-target required skeletal archer. So you can cast that first. Then you're going to start on your back bar and do poison injection on the single target mob that you need to prioritize. Endless Hail and Razor Caltrops if they're available in AoE. Now you can drop a Pestilence Colossus once you've done a Poison Injection or Increased Weapon Damage, and then Bar Swap. Immediately when you get to your front bar, then you're gonna go into the Blighted Blast Bones combination. Blighted Blast Bones, one lethal arrow, and typically that Blast Bones has hit the target, and then you can feed the Detonating Siphon. Once you feed Detonating Siphon, you're gonna go back and hit Blast Bones, and then one or two lethal arrows and Blast Bones. One or two lethal arrows and Blast Bones. After about one or two combinations of that, then your damage over time will start falling off. So you'll have to go to your back bar and reapply poison injection. You'll come up to the front bar, hit blast bones, and then reapply your detonating siphon, and then reapply skeletal archer, then one or two combinations. So when in doubt, blast bones, make sure that's up. If you need a filler, fill it with lethal arrow until you kind of think, what do I need to do? The number one priority on your back bar is really just poison injection on the number one target. The number one priority damage over time on your front bar is Skeletal Archer. If you keep Skeletal Archer up and you keep poison injection up with doing Blast Bones, Lethal Arrow combo, you'll do good damage. Now let's talk about the gear setup. And I was shocked at how well this worked. I was hitting really, really hard. I think I almost got 50,000 Blast Bone damage using the Thief Mundus Stone with no healer or anything. And what I use is Kinra's Wrath, five piece. But unlike other people, I leave it on at all times. So five body pieces. What this does is dealing damage with lighter heavy attacks is gonna build up to five stacks. When you have five stacks, you're gonna get major berserk for you and anyone around you within 12 meters is gonna get minor berserk. So it's a flat 10% 
percent damage increase. Now, when it's on the body at all times, rather than a weapon, it's so much easier to maintain. So when you go back to your back bar, you're not super pressured by missing in every single cooldown or a light attack. You can just maintain your light attack weaving or heavy attack weaving in between, reapply your buffs, and maintain that 10% damage at much higher rate, especially for newer or beginner players. Some flexible options that you can use on this specific gear piece or the next one I'm going to present to you. Good crafting option is Hunting's Rage. It's going to give you weapon damage 300 at the five piece in a good combination of critical. Another one is Briarheart. It's going to give you good weapon damage. Doesn't have 100% uptime, but it's also going to heal you. Leviathan is going to give you a lot of critical. Reliquin is considered the number one single target damage trial set. Souls Ons is really good for trash packs if you need a trial set. And then Vicious Serpent, great crazy sustain and resources and mobility. Another five piece that I'm gonna run is Togvin's Warband, typically on the jewelry and two body pieces. So this is gonna be maintained 100% time, just like Kinra's. The five piece is quite similar. And when you do critical damage rather than light attack, it's gonna build a stack up to 10 stacks. At 10 stacks, you're gonna have a lot more weapon critical and you're also gonna have your, your minor force buff increasing your crit damage done. This is exceptionally useful because we're not going to play in melee range so barb trap is not a reliable option nor is a firing off channeled acceleration all the time so not having this on our front bar but always active along with kinraz means about five ten seconds into the fight you're going to start hitting really really hard also go with the other flexible options i previously mentioned and now we're going to get into weapon choices front bar like i talked about earlier we're going to go with the veteran dragon star arena one this is going to increase your weapon and spell damage by 330 against the target affected by your poison arrow i'm going to put the infuse trait on this with a weapon damage enchant so when i hit it i'm going to get five seconds of a flood of weapon damage and then 10 seconds of 330. Some of the options that you can flex in and out for this specific weapon or the other one I'm going to mention, Maelstrom Arena weapon. This is going to be useful if you're using the Endless Hail combination. Black Rose Prison weapon, this is going to be useful if you want to use Disorient Shot or Magnum Shot. And then Agility is very, very easy two-piece because it's going to give you a lot of max stats and it's quite easy to obtain. Or just simply go with the two-piece crafted option like Hunting's Rage for a little bit extra critical. Next item set up is Perfected Point Blank Snipe. Increasing your damage done with Snipe based on how close you are to the target. So again, the reason we're using this is in PvE, the more coordinated you get, you can't be off doing your own thing, clear in the back, just sniping. Plus, we're not going to be doing Snipe a whole lot. We need to be in 28 meter range for our Blighted Blast Bones anyways. So if you're doing a trial and you have to be up close where the rest of your folks in the trial are getting all the important buffs, you're not going to be hampered completely on damage. This is why I prefer this on that bar. And those are the gear choices with flexible options. Let's look at the chart here. So my gear chart, you have to run seven medium with this setup because the Kinraz and Togvins are both medium options. Togvins Warband Jewelry, I go with the Bloodthirsty trait. All weapon damage because my sustain is pretty good and I'm going to assume that you're going to be playing with healers or tanks throwing out orbs and other synergies to keep your damage high. The body traits go with all divines, glyphs, all stamina. You should be right around 22 to 23,000 health with whatever food choices you go with. On your front bar, which is your primary damage bar, you're going to go with precise trait with damage, health, poison, since you get the poison status effect using lethal arrow. Back bar, you're going to go infuse with the weapon damage using that poison injection for a huge boost in damage. And then I usually like three weapon damage glyphs. You can go with one recovery if you're getting a little bit low. Bow, bow all day. Now we'll pull up the bow necro gear chart and this is what I look like fully buffed single target on not a parse dummy but just a solo buff dummy. So I'm at about 5300 weapon damage. My critical is 62% with the thief Mundus dome. I'm not mid max so I don't have undaunted maxed out otherwise I get 30,000 stamina. I got 23k health because I'm an orc. A little bit of recovery with running a potion there 1800 and you got about the sweet spot about 5,000 weapon damage 60% spell critical is really really good the penetration for physical penetration is really going to be up to your tanks and healers to try to strip those armors down and that's our gear and chart loadout let's talk about the champion points next and with the warfare tree i'm going to take grateful strikes granting weapon and spell damage to my damage abilities 
Deadly Aim, increasing my damage done with single target. Master at Arms, increasing my damage done with direct damage. And Fighting Finesse, increasing your damage with crit damage and crit healing. I like Wraithful Strikes, but consider that your flex spot because we have a lot of direct damage and not as many damage over time depending, so this will apply to everything. Fitness Tree, I go with the Fortified, increasing my armor. Expert Evasion for doing the roly-poly dodge rolls on my bow. Bloody Renewal, restoring stamina whenever I kill an enemy. And Boundless Vitality for a little bit more max health. Green or Craft tree i go with steed's blessing rationer liquid efficiency and treasure hunter for the attributes i go with 64 points in stamina i would not recommend using par suit i'd re be right around 22,000, 23,000 health depending on your racial choice this way if you make a mistake and screw up you're not going to be completely penalized and die Let's talk about the racial choice, and if I had to pick it, I would probably do a Dark Elf. The reason being is you're going to get max stamina and weapon damage, and also you don't have a whole lot of sustain, but you can switch between magic and stamina and do a lot of damage with either. Khajiit is also a good race, but the crit damage cap really affects this race and usefulness, and I go with an Orc on this one because I like to do PvE and PvP with it, and it's really well balanced, along with an increased unique passive that heals me when I do damage, so it makes me a little bit more tanky. Munda Stone, I run the Thief Munda Stone, so I want to get my critical chance up to 60% or higher self-buffed. Consumables, you have a bunch of different options. So I'm going to go with the most expensive, Artarium Takeaway Broth. This is going to increase your max stats the most and your recovery the most, but it's quite expensive. A less expensive version of this is Dubious Cameron Throne. This is going to be a little bit better. This is going to be a little bit cheaper, but not a nearly as much damage. And then lastly, Lava Foot Soup and Salt Trace. This is what you're going to use if you want to parse and improve your damage over time. It doesn't have any health with it, but it has the max stamina for increasing your damage in recovery and then i run essence of weapon power potion so this is going to increase my weapon damage and it's going to increase my critical rating making sure i have both those buffs on at all times those buffs will last for over 47 seconds if you have the medicinal use passive in the alchemy tree so even if you don't like crafting on this character it's recommended to get medicinal use via crafting for that specific passive that way you put three points into it you can have 100 percent uptime on weapon critical and weapon damage it's expensive but this is what you do at end game to get the most damage you can well gang that's a build bow bow never thought i'd do this but it hits like a mac truck it's a lot of fun and has flexibility uh the survivability might be hit and miss so you have to kind of play and adapt it to see what works best for you and flexibilities in and out for maybe more sustain more survivability or just simpler i appreciate you watching so make sure to hit that like subscribe and come follow me on twitch.tv slash Gaming as I play these videos live. Thanks for watching.